Um, you know, but one thing I'd like to see, I felt like there was too many times, um, it's too many orange jerseys watching the play finish. Uh, we've got to do a better job being technical up front. Um, we've got to be able to, to sustain and finish blocks defensively. Um, you know, disappointed in the lack of turnovers. Uh, obviously had a couple of opportunities there and didn't finish on the ball. Uh, didn't think we played particularly well in the, in the back end of our defense. We've got to improve there. Um, still too many mistakes. Uh, too many mental errors, and we, we've got to be able to clean that up. Special teams-wise, uh, you know, we, we missed a field goal. We kick a kickoff out of bounds, um, and there wasn't much opportunity other than that uh, in the punt and punt return game. But uh, got to continue to improve there. When you look at Georgia this week, uh, I think it's one of the, the better teams that I've seen um, in, in college football over the last couple of years. I think these guys – uh, have a lot of team speed. They're big. Uh, they're physical at, at the line of scrimmage and out on the perimeter. They've got good running backs. Uh, good skill players get the guys the ball, give you multiple looks in the, in, uh, on the defensive side, uh, create a lot of negative plays uh, in special teams uh, because of their athleticism. They've got good returners. Uh, they've got good speed and they're physical on the, on the coverage team. So they don't have a weakness. And uh, it'll be a tremendous challenge for us, but something that we're looking forward to. All right, we'll start with questions. We'll go to Blake Topmeyer, followed by David Oven. Yeah, hey, Jeremy, uh, I was wondering what your assessment of your defense is through two weeks. Uh, you know, what are some, some things that you've, you've liked and some areas that maybe you want to see improved going forward? Well, been very inconsistent, uh, particularly in the back end. You know, when you, if you put stress on your back end, you've got to be able to eliminate big plays and I, I felt like from a technical standpoint uh, we really need to improve there uh, we need to improve with our eyes um, you know I felt like uh, having our eyes in the wrong spot got us in trouble in several plays on Saturday and and that's just uh, it goes back to eye discipline so we got to be looking at the right stuff um, and and we need we need to get more turnovers and then uh, I was wondering if you had an update on uh, Jameer Johnson or Elijah Simmons. I, I didn't hear the question, Blake. What? Who? Sorry. Uh, if you had an update on Jameer Johnson, who who didn't play Saturday, or Elijah Simmons, who left the game. Yeah, I, I think both of those guys will be available this week. David. David Oban, that is. You there? Tell you what, we'll go, uh, we'll go to David Paschal next. Jeremy, uh, you said all along this summer how proud you were of Caden Mace and how he's handled everything. What, what do you say to him this week now that it's sure to be a unique situation? Well, I mean, I, I know Cade's uh, really happy that he's getting a chance to play. He's very thankful for that. Um, you know, he, he went against most of these guys every single day and uh, when you're a competitor on both sides of the ball, it won't be no different for the kids from Georgia. They're used to going against Cade, and Cade's used to going against them. So uh, they'll be real familiar with each other. David Oven, you there? Yeah, sorry, my Zoom crashed. No I'm problem. Sure what's going on there. Uh, Jeremy, what right now about, about this team and moving forward with the rest of this season? Dave, you, you cut out just a little bit. Can you ask me again? Yeah, what about this team as you move forward the rest of the season gives you the most confidence? Well, their willingness to work. Um, you know, they're very coachable. Uh, they, we, they, they understand that we're not playing at the level that we feel like we're capable of playing. Uh, they understand that we've got to go to work on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to improve. Uh, there's lots of things from a, a technical as, aspect that we need to really improve on. We need to improve on our effort uh, and finishing. We'll go to Brent Hubs and then Gustavo. Coach, do you feel like you'll be you, you'll have more um, personnel in the secondary this week? Will Bryce Thompson be back 100%? Do you anticipate having Sean Schamberger? And then the second question is, 
how physical do you think your football team is right now in terms of the physicality they play with? Well, um, we should be gaining some guys back. But listen, as, as we all know, with the testing three days a week, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. Uh, so we continue to work a lot of different guys. You know, if we would have played um, today, Bryce probably would have been able to play the entire time. So he, he should be ready to go. Um, and from a physicality standpoint, we need to improve in a lot of areas. Uh, that would be one of them. Uh, when we talk about sustaining and finishing, I uh, just didn't see us finishing blockers, finishing runners, uh, you know, on the perimeters, not to the level that we want to be at. Gustavo. Good afternoon, Coach. Uh, you address a lot of the situations that the team needs to improve. And how do you see, you know, the challenges facing a top four team in the country? You know, do you think you're addressing those issues because it, you're going to face a much tougher challenge this weekend? Well, I've said before, Georgia's got a really good football team. They're very well coached. They've got good players, you know, uh, and they're, they're going to be there Saturday. We need to focus on the things that we can control, which is us. And we have lots of things that we need to work on. And we started working on them last night. We'll continue through the rest of the week. All right, Austin Price followed by Eric Kane. Coach, it felt like Wanya had a, had a pretty good game Saturday. When you went back and watched the film, did that did that kind of, you know, appear that way to you? And then um, Richard Accounts got a lot of, you know, game reps under his belt at Georgia. What what do you respect about his game? What does he do well? You know, Wanya, um, he obviously he, – he played better this week than he did last week, and he should. Uh, he didn't have uh, near enough practices to be ready to to play at a high level the first week. Uh, he got three more this past week. He'll get three more this week. So uh, we need him to continue to improve. Um, you know, Richard's a guy that's played a lot of ball there at Georgia. He's a guy that um, makes plays in the back end. He's uh, really good, has good eyes, uh, breaks on the ball well, good tackler. So uh, good, good football player. Eric? Jeremy, you went to that jumbo package on offense early and often in that first half and continued on throughout the game. After going back and reviewing uh, that package on offense, what did you like? What did you not like? And is this something that uh, we should expect moving forward this season? Well, I, I felt like the way, um, you know, Missouri plays defense, it probably gave us the best opportunity to ensure that we would have a chance to block everybody in the box for them. You know, they really – put a lot of guys up there and it gave us the best opportunity Saturday. So we'll pick and choose how we use it as the season goes on. Go to three, uh, Teresa Walker, then Mike Wilson. Coach, have you had a chance to look at Georgia's Stetson Bennett yet and how different uh, or what he brings to the table for the Bulldogs? Well, um, he obviously uh, is a smart young man. Uh, you can see him getting in and out of plays. He moves wide receivers. If they, they've got somebody that they can't block on the perimeter, he gets them in position, uh, gets the ball out of his hand, uh, doesn't take sacks, um, you know, plays with confidence. Uh, got a lot of respect for him, you know, um, by the way he's played in the two games that he's come in. Uh, and you can see that um, his teammates have confidence in him also. Mike? Mike Wilson, you there? Yep, sorry. No uh, Jer Jeremy, I was just wondering what you thought of Jalen McCullough's day the other day, now that he got a full game and has had some time under him, um, and also Theo Jackson at Star, how you felt he played there. Well, I think all these guys got to play at a higher level. Uh, you know, I, I believe as they – the, the more they practice, uh, they'll improve. Um, you know, and we've got to do that. Uh, our competition is going to continue to improve every week, uh, and we got to raise our level of play in the back end. Just, just as a follow-up, do you think that some of those back-end issues are tied into to Bryce being banged up and not having a veteran like Sean Schamberger out there? Well, uh, there's probably – a lot of reasons. Uh, I'd say the first one probably starts with as us as coaches. We've got to do a better job coaching them up. Players need to have better discipline and in, in looking at the right stuff. Uh, we've got to be uh, more fundamentally sound in the techniques that we use. Um, 
And, you know, most of the guys that we have that are playing, they've played a lot of ball for us. Uh, so it's not like it's their first time. Um, so we've got we've to create the right habits every day in practice uh, so it shows up on game day. All right, Rob Lewis and then David Hale. Coach, 230 yards on the ground the other day. Big jump from the first weekend. Just what did you see from the backs and the offensive line that made things so successful? Well, I feel like we were committed to running the football, um, and that gave us an opportunity to do that. Uh, I also feel like we left a lot of, a lot of yards out there. Uh, you know, we, we ran one particular play ten times in the game, and we only blocked it right four times. So uh, we've got to eliminate those mistakes uh, to give us a chance to have more success. David? Hey, Jeremy, uh, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you, you guys have obviously made such huge progress over the last year, but those wins have not obviously been against the, the big names like Georgia. Um, do you, are you a believer in sort of needing a signature win like this uh, to establish a program? And, and do you ask your guys to embrace something like that moment? Or do you kind of want them to, to consider it just the next game on the schedule? Well, we really don't control the schedule. Uh, you know, we play ever who's the next team owner schedule. Our team has continued to improve uh, over the last couple of years, and we've got to continue to do that. We're nowhere where we want to be. Um, you know, we understand uh, the teams that are in this league, the teams that have had success. And, um, you know, it, when, you, when you watch um, – week in and week out, the teams that consistently play the right way, whether it's um, securing the football or taking the football away, uh, not making uh, mental mistakes, uh, and really playing uh, with an edge, with, with toughness and effort and all the intangibles. The teams that can do that over and over and over and sustain, they're the ones that have success in this league. All right, Vince Ferrar, followed by David Ovin. Coach, Georgia really got after Bo Nix and Auburn and, and had great success at the line of scrimmage defensively. What do you see in them that makes them so good defensively, especially getting after the quarterback? Well, it starts with having good players. Uh, they've got good players. Uh, they're very multiple uh, with their schemes. Um, they, they do a really nice job playing man-to-man. -man. They denied the ball. Uh, they mix in. Uh, a lot of different looks. Uh, so you got you to gotta protect the quarterback. You got to be able to establish a run game a little bit to take pressure off the quarterback. Um, and, you know, you got to be able to throw and catch the football. And, and it's going to be tight windows. It always is against teams that play good defense in this league. Uh, you know, I've said it many a times, uh, you know, you're, you're the, the, the defensive backs place the limitations on the defense. They've got good defensive backs. Uh, and, and they put a lot of pressure on them. David Oven. Uh, Jeremy, the, the heavy package you guys have been using, one, what do you guys call it? And two, whose idea was that? Where'd that come from? Well, Jim's been doing this for a long time. So obviously it's his idea. Uh, what we call it, I have no idea. Uh, the name that we use um, might be 12 heavy. I don't know. Um, All right, we'll go to Ryan Schumpert, then Bailey Johnson. Hey, Coach, can you just talk a little bit about what you've seen from your defensive line in the first two weeks and the, the challenge they'll have this Saturday facing Georgia's run game? We need to be more consistent up front. Um, <clears throat> need to play harder. Need to strain uh, for a longer period of time. Um, you know, I think most we, we, we need to be tied in together uh, with the linebackers and the outside linebackers. I mean, our football team, we've got a long ways to go. We've got to continue to work hard to improve. Um, and, and, you know, knowing our, our players uh, and our people on our staff, they're going to work hard to do that. Bailey? Hi, Jeremy. I'm just wondering when Cade Mays and his lawyer say that Georgia was a toxic environment, what do they mean by that and what are they referring to? Well, I have no idea. I was not involved in those conversations. Thanks. We'll go to, we'll go to Teresa Walker and then Trey Wallace. 
Uh, Jeremy, when you talk about needing to continue to improve, how big is the offensive line going to be a part of that improvement, and, and how good can that unit end up being this season? Well, our, <clears throat> there's not one, posi one position on our team that doesn't need to improve. Um, you know, we, we've got to work hard to do that. Um, you know, and, I, and particularly the offensive line, they understand that they need to work harder uh, they need to practice better. Uh, they need to finish better in practice. Um, you know, the way you practice is the way you play. So it's, a, it's our entire team. So we got to work hard this week at practice to, to create the right habits so we can sustain and do it for a long period of time. Jeremy, when you go back and look at the film tape on, on Garantano and his receivers, uh, what did you take away from that? How would you say that Garantano performed and, and also – what did you think of the receivers getting open in space? Do you think they're getting better at that uh, since they're working more together? Well, I didn't, I didn't feel like we got away from man coverage very good on Saturday. Uh, we need to improve at the wide receiver position. We need to play faster. Uh, we need to create some separation at the top of routes, um, you know, and, and um, make sure we line up properly. That gives us an opportunity to have success, you know. It's probably two plays in the game that uh, I, I wish we would have thrown the ball away that we didn't, uh, that could have possibly been turnovers, and we can't have those plays. Last question, Ryan Shumpert. Hey, Coach, you were just saying that you didn't really like how your players, your receivers played against man defense. How big of a concern is that going into Saturday against a team that plays as much man and as effectively as Georgia does? Well, it, it, it's, uh, I believe it's a challenge for them, uh, you know, because they will, they will get man coverage not only this week, uh, every week in this league, right? It's the way this league is. Uh, the windows are very small. There's very little zone coverage. It's tight windows, and you've got to be able to separate, and you've got to be able to make contested catches. All right, thank you all very much. We'll have players tomorrow, and we'll send out that link.